Today, we will have a brief introduction of Rowat three-phase energy storage system installation. The core parts of the whole system are SPH10000 TL3BH three-phase hybrid inverter and high-voltage battery system. There are six models in SPH series. Single high-voltage battery cabinet could be installed with a maximum of four pieces H4A050 battery modules. Each battery module is 2.4 kWh. And the range of battery series connection is from 3 pieces to 10 pieces. The battery cabinet to be stacked up reaching the capacity range from 7.2 kWh to 24 kWh. The operating environment is so important that it will influence the lifespan of SPH, so please don't expose the SPH to the environment of sunshine, rain and snow. In order to ensure the machine can run normally and easy to operate, please provide adequate space for SPH. Before installation, we need to prepare the tools. Fourteen. First of all, unpacking the SPH package and check whether the unit damage or missing parts. If happened, please contact the supplier. There are the parts inside the SPH package. There are some connection terminals including battery connection terminals, PV connection terminals, PV switch, antenna, USB for local firmware updates, RS-232 Wi-Fi for communication accessories, DIP for safety standard of different countries, dry contact, AC grid connection port, EPS output connection port, emergency power supply, and communication terminals including CAN for grow watt lithium battery, RS-485 reserved for communication, DRMS only for Austria and New Zealand market 3, meter 1 and meter 2 for three-phase smart meter, NTC reserved for lead acid battery temperature sensor. Make sure the PV switch is off. Similar to the traditional inverter connecting, the input of the PV panel can be realized by using PV terminal. Insert PV panel positive and negative cables into the relative terminal of SPH. Limit. Maximum PV voltage 1000 volts. Maximum PV input current 12 amperes. Maximum PV input power per stream 6500 watts. Remark: We suggest you use the cable greater than 4 square millimeters to 12 AWG to connect. The battery terminal is similar to the PV input can be realized by using PV terminal. 2. Insert battery positive and negative cable into the relative battery terminal of SPH. Limit. Battery voltage range 100 to 550 volts. Max battery input current 25 ampere. Max battery input power 10,000 watts. We suggest you use the cable greater than or equals to 4 square millimeters per 10 AWG to connect. SPH has an AC grid terminal and an EPS output terminal. We can follow this AC wire suggestion to choose suitable cable. Confirm the L1, L2, L3 and PE port of the connection terminal. Thread cables through pressure screw, seal ring, threaded sleeve in sequence. Insert cables into connection terminal according to polarities indicate on it and tighten the screws. Push and rotate threaded sleeve on to connection terminal until both are locked tightly. Plug the socket into AC output terminal. Clockwise rotation to tighten socket. Counterclockwise rotation to loosen the socket. Same as the on-grid connection terminal installation. Tight the threaded sleeve into the off-grid connection terminal and plug the socket into EPS outlet terminal. Caution. No matter the grid is available or outage, 
make sure to isolate EPS load from both the public grid and the SPHAC grid terminal. Dismantle the waterproof cover. Thread cables through the threaded sleeve, seal ring, and waterproof cover. The CAN cable is used for the communication between the inverter and the battery. Meter cable is used for communicating with smart meter. Connect the CAN meter cable into the corresponding terminal as illustrated and tighten the waterproof. The grounding connector is at the bottom of the SPH. Firstly, connect the L1, L2, L3 and line of the grid to port 1, port 4, port 7, port 10 and connect the port 3, port 6, port 9, port 10 to the L1, L2, L3 and line of the load. Secondly, connect the LAN pin 5, white blue to port 24 of the smart meter and LAN pin 1, white orange to port 25 of the smart meter. If the customer requires the backup power function, Worldwide provides the optional ATST for our system. We can follow the diagram to connect the ATST. Standard 1 is for general use, and Standard 2 is for the market, like Australia, where the neutral line can't be switched. Use the 16 AWG cable to connect the contractor 1 port 3 to contactor 1 port A1 and contactor 2 port A1 and use the other 16 AWG cable to connect the contactor 2 port 5 to contactor 1 port A2 and contactor 2 port A2. Secondly, connect 10 AWG cable of the grid R, grid S, grid T and grid N into the corresponding ports as illustrated and lock the ground cable on the copper bar. Thirdly, connect 10 AWG cables of the EPS-R, EPS-S, EPS-T and EPS-N of the SPH into the corresponding ports as illustrated. Finally, connect 10 AWG cables of the EPS load L1, EPS load L2, EPS load L3 and EPS load N cables into the corresponding ports as illustrated. For Australia market, you still need to short the port R7 and port 5 of contactor 2 based on the standard 1. There is a high voltage battery cabinet package and the whole package including Before installing, please read the user manual of the battery cabinet installation carefully and follow the system installation as guided. The cabinet which is placed on the bottom needs to remove the screws from wall mounted. The cabinet which is placed on the top needs to remove four base support feet. Open the cabinet and remove the two waterproofs of the through holes. After completing the above steps, stack up the battery cabinets. After the battery cabinets are stacked, find the M8X40 combination bolt inside the accessory bag and lock the four connection holes inside the cabinet. Move the battery module into the cabinet one by one. Tighten the battery module into the battery cabinet by screws one by one. Connect the power cable between battery modules in series connection. Connect the communication cable between battery modules. The power and communication cable should go through the holes of two battery cabinet to connect the other battery module. The whole battery cabinet is completed. Connect the communication cable from the inverter to the BMS module. Connect the ground cable and connect it to the bottom cabinet. Connect external 4 AWG power cable from BMS module to one side of the terminal block and the other side of the terminal block for 10 AWG battery output cable to the inverter. As illustrated, the power cable of the battery system connects with the internal block and finally go to the inverter. Finally, you can see the whole battery system. Reminder, because the cable size of the battery system output and SPH battery input is different, if you don't use the high voltage battery cabinet, 
you need an extra DC transfer transfer switch between the battery system and inverter. The DC transfer switch should meet the specification. Voltage greater than 600 VDC and current greater than 50 ampere. SPH provides an RS232 port for communication. The whole energy storage system can be monitored via Shine Wi-Fi S and Shine Link. You should make sure the following pin 1 and pin 2 of RS232 port are on before using Shine Wi-Fi S or Shine Link. As demonstrated, you can see the whole ESS system and now we start to power the whole system. Firstly, turn on the breaker between the grid and the inverter. Secondly, turn on the PV breaker and PV switch of the inverter. Finally, power on the battery system. After the system was powered on, if PV, grid, and battery are available, the system would work on normal mode. When the SPH is on the normal mode, the screen shows normal and LED is green. If SPH didn't enter normal mode successfully, especially if the LED is red, please contact the Growa service department for help. There is a final whole three-phase energy storage system including SPH 10000 LT3BH, high voltage battery system, AC breaker between inverter and grid, AC breaker for EPS output, DC breaker for solar input, three-phase smart meter, ATST.